these poems to live Call these lungs to sing once again I will praise Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus
shadow he won't light up Mountain he won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love guide Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't learn it. I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Hello everyone, this is Pastor Matthew O'Shell from Solid Rock Apostolic Church and I am so excited to be with you tonight on this Wednesday night Bible study I love God's word, I love God's people, and everything that the Lord has been doing at our church has just been fantastic. We truly are in revival. God's been doing some amazing things, and I pray, I pray your 2021 is off to a fantastic start and that you are able to experience the blessings of God all in your life. And they, uh, I know. No, we just came off of a fantastic Sunday service where the Lord moved in mightily and ministered greatly to his people. And uh, I just just love getting together with God's people. So uh, again, just want to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Tonight, if you believe that 
this this word or this sermon uh, would be a blessing for someone. If you would please just like it and share it, um, we'd be most thankful. Thankful for that. Don't have a home church to go to. Would love, love, love for you to join me this Sunday. We have a service at 10 o'clock in the morning Sunday school. We all kind of split up. The kids all have their classes, adult Bible study, 10 o'clock. And then 11 o'clock is our evangelistic service. And so we just, we just love having church. We love getting together. Um, we love feeling the presence of Jesus. And it's a great church. It really is a great church. I think you like it. It's worth the drive. If you don't have a home church, um, we're located at 8991 Old State Route 36, Bradford, Ohio. And that's in between Piqua and Greenville. And I promise you it's worth the drive. It's worth the drive. I'm going to get right into the word of the Lord tonight. Again, I value your time. and a, um, But if you have your Bibles, Second Chronicles chapter number 29, very interesting passage of scripture, but one that has uh, such an in-depth meaning to it. And I'll read it for you. Verse 1, Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. Verse number three gets intriguing. It says, He in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in the priest and the Levites and gathered them together into the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place for our fathers have trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. A very interesting passage of scripture that I'd like to dive into tonight. And I pray this this sermon is a blessing to someone watching today. Let's pray before we dive in. Jesus, we we love you, Lord, tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for the worship of the people. We thank you, Lord, tonight for your word. Lord, I pray, Lord, this word would help somebody. Lord, help us, God, in in all of our paths of life, Lord, that we could find you in everything in this life, God. Nothing is more important than finding you. Jesus, help us, Lord, tonight to find you in your word. And Lord, help us, God, not only to be hearers, but doers of it. We ask in your name, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we understand a few basic things. Hezekiah was obviously a young man that understood the value of a house that needed repairing. He understood that something was desperately, desperately wrong. He understood that that uh, what good is it to have a house if it needs repaired? And what good is it to have a house if you can't even get in where the doors are broke? So uh, I think it's important that we understand and we take value in our lives. And and regardless of where you're at in your relationship with the Lord, um, from time to time, you'll have to reassess where you're at. And you'll have to have a value system in your life. A person that doesn't have a value system has no importance in their lives because they have nothing that they value. And so it's important to understand that I I have a value system. You need to have a value system in your life. And Hezekiah had a value system. 
his first value system we find out through the reading of scripture was is that god's house is broken his house is broken we got to fix this thing we can make it without this and we can make it without that but we cannot make it without the house of the living god and i think it's important i think it's important that we that we measure some things and we try our best we try our best to really um, 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 develop that value system. This is something that's very important for us to understand. It is very easy to mess things up, but it takes time, it takes value and attention to clean things up. Think of this, that horrific day in American history, 9-11, the catastrophic events of uh, of my generation, if you would, that completely turned America upside down. It took 12 seconds to bring down the Twin Towers. 12 seconds to bring down the Twin Towers. But it took almost three years to clean it up. Think about that. 12 seconds to tear it down. Almost three years to clean everything back up. This is important for us to understand. It is easier to mess things up than to put them back together again. And this is, in, this is important for all of us. If we'll stay on top of it, if we'll have that value system, if we'll, if we'll keep things in order in our life, if we'll just say, God, I'm going to seek you first in our life, we'd be a lot better off. We'd be a whole lot better uh, off. And, and this is important because in Hezekiah's reign, um, he, he, he comes on to the job and he looks and assesses the situation and, and what could have happened overnight and messing things up and the doors being torn down and the house being ripped apart and all this other stuff. Uh, um, Hezekiah looks at this and says, this didn't happen overnight. And it's probably not going to be repaired overnight, but there's a process. There's a process for restoration that I think that we have to really look in, look into tonight. First, I want to I want to get this. I want to capture this. King Ahaz, um, who was the king before Hezekiah reigned for 16 years, uh, he was the one that introduced Israel to pagan gods, he, and he added in. Uh, an i an idolatrous um, way of living, and he invited this particular aspect right into the house of God. First thing we have to understand this: that God will not share His glory with any other thing or any other little g God. God is sovereign; He is supreme. He will not share a platform. He won't stare. He will not share a stage. He he wants to be Lord of all, Lord of everything. But 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 we understand that 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 King Ahaz has introduced. He has introduced pagan gods right into the house of the living God. And, and I think this is important. Any time that there's an there's 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 pagan worship brought into the house of the living God, God's house becomes broken down. God's ways become muddied. Um, God's, God's righteousness becomes clouded inside the hearts of saints because God will not share his glory with any other entity or any other thing. And, and, and he, was, he was the king. He was the king necessary that ignored the 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 prophecies of Isaiah and Hosea yeah. Hezekiah he he takes over and the first thing that Hezekiah does is that he evaluates the mess that Ahaz has brought to the house of God. He evaluates, he looks at it and says, says there's, there's some things that are not right here. There's some things that we need to take um, inventory of and, and our value system is not right. And I think it's important to note this uh, tonight in our Bible study that Hezekiah knows that it will be impossible. 
It will be impossible to build any spiritual habitation on the mess that Ahaz has allowed to come in into the house of God. It will be impossible to build on top of this. And I think this is where so many people, um, they, 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 they kind of mess up is they always try to build on top of the rubble, build on top of the mess. Sometimes, sometimes you have to repair some things before you build on top of it. If you build on top of broken, whatever you build on top of the broken will eventually break. And I want to say that again. If you build on top of the broken, whatever you build on top of the broken will eventually break. That's why we need restoration in the church. We need restoration in our homes. We need restoration in our lives. We need restoration in our minds sometimes. We, we, we need for God to just tear down the walls of our thinking and then to build some things back up again. And Hezekiah knew this. Hezekiah knew if I'm going to get this thing back to where it needs to go, I've got to, I've got to start repairing some things. I've got to start, I've got to start, uh, start to start, start to start demoing some things and tearing some things down and rebuilding some things back up again. And I want to tell you tonight that you're not going to be able to build a godly life, a godly home when you allow for ungodly things to penetrate your life and your mind and your heart. This is where living for God really just comes into focus. You see, there are some things that you're going to have to, to, to let into your heart, and there's going to, a whole lot of stuff you're going to have to let out of your heart. And when I say your heart, I'm really talking about your mind. There's going to be some things that God's going to put inside your thoughts, and there's some things that you're going to need for God to just take away from your thought pattern. You see, there will come a point to your Christian walk with God where you're going to have to clean his house up so God can bless your home and your life. There has to be, there has to be a point in your life where you look in the mirror or perhaps even your prayer closet and say, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. That's important for us. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Hezekiah knew that no one, no one would be allowed to come in unless he first repaired the doors. And this is important in our life. How many people do we chase away because the doors of our friendships have not been repaired. The doors of our thinking has not been repaired. The doors of the way that we act and we, the way that we interact with other people has not been repaired. I think it's important that we have an entry point to friendships, to family, to our walk with God, to our brothers and sisters in Christ, and yes, to our coworkers. You see, you're never going to get anywhere in life. Your circle is always going to be small if you don't repair the doors of entry into your life. How many people do we chase away because the doors are locked in our life? The doors are locked in our, in our soul. How many times do we go and we say, God, I want you to use me, Lord. I want you to bless me. But, but, but the Lord, he stands at the door and he's knocking and no one opens the door and the doors are broken in our lives. Hezekiah knew that no one would be allowed to come in unless he first repaired the doors. You see, to get anywhere in God, to get anywhere in God, you're going to have to repair the doors. The entryway is so important. The entryway is your, your, your thought pattern for how it should be and how it could be. I've met a lot of people that have been hurt before, sometimes by church. Church hurt is real hurt. And they, don't, they, they have a preconceived idea that I got hurt at this church, so I'm going to get hurt at every church. And, and, and well, this person at this church 20 years ago, they, they hurt me real bad. And they, I confined in them some things. And they told everyone, well, everyone in the whole church is this way. No, that's your door that you, that you have created. Not all of us are the same. Everyone is different. And, 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 and there are no two churches alike either. And so we have to repair 
the doors of our life. And the only way to do that is to desire more of a spiritual encounter with God. The Bible says that the carnal man receiveth not the things of God because they're foolishness to him. You see, carnal people don't care about the doors, but the spiritual doors are what you're going to have to walk through in order to make it inside to his presence. You see, carnal people say, well, who cares? What difference does it make, Pastor? What, what difference does it make? That don't, uh, that don't mean nothing. You know, I can go to church and be happy or I can be mad. It makes no difference to me if I have any friends in church. And, you know, I've been serving God all these years and I've always been the outsider and I've always been the one that no one liked. And, and, and I just want to ask a simple question today. Maybe it's the doors that you need to fix. Maybe it's your doors that you need to fix. You, you've been praying that God would use you for 20 years, and, and, and God's desire is to use you. It really is. His, 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 his promises are yes and amen, and, and it's, just, it's just the doors are broke right now. And, and Hezekiah realizes, if I'm going to get this country back to where it needs to be, i got to repair the doors. If the doors are broke, no one can get in. The church, the church itself must be a working hospital to the hurting and to those that have deep pain. Because if our doors are broken, then they won't have anywhere to go to get the healing that they are longing for. The church doors have got to be repaired. Hezekiah says, like, we got to repair the church. We got to repair the church. And from the beginning of time, the world has always been evil. From the very beginning of time, the first family that ever walked to this earth had sin in their life. There's always been sin in our world. From the very beginning, there's been sin. Adam and Eve, uh, they were the first ones to sin. We, are, we were born sinners. There's always been sin in our world. The only thing that's changed is the posture and the position of the church. And I think sometimes, church, that we we got to have to get into repair mode. I think repair mode's a beautiful thing. Ahaz was willing to let go, but Hezekiah said, let's repair the gospel. And I think it's important if we're ever going to tap into the revival that God has for the church of the living God, we're going to have to start repairing some things. It's time that we repair some holiness. It's time that we repair some righteousness. It's time that we repair some faithfulness. It's time that we repair some passion. It's time that we repair some heartfelt, anointed uh, a desire to be closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ahaz said, who cares? But Hezekiah says that there are some things that are worth repairing. There are some things that are worth fighting for. There are some things that are worth getting in there and saying, all right, I got to fix this. This is important. I got to fix this. And, and I just want to, I want to, I want to insert this uh, to in, inside tonight's Bible study. If, if you only understood the people that are waiting for you to get repaired. Think about that. I'll pause for a minute. Think about that. If you only understood the people that are waiting for you to get repaired, how many other blessings are hinged on you repairing your life? How many other family members are hinged on you repairing your relationship with God? How many other people are hinged on you repairing your relationship with the church as well. I, th- I, want you, I want you to know today that Solid Rock Apostolic Church is a church of restoration. We are a church where we believe in restoring people. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because each and every one of us have had to, had to have restoration in our life. before. All of us have needed restored. All of us have. All of us have. And, 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 and the Lord wants this for our life. Hezekiah says again that there are some things, some things that are worth fighting for. I think it's important if you're ever going to repair the church doors, you're going to have to realize that there's a place where God brought you out of and there's a place where God's bringing you into. You see, Ahaz tried his best to fit church 
and with carnal living. But Hezekiah realizes that God did not call us out for us to try to fit in. God called us out for us to be in the house of God and in his presence. You see, our desire, our, our heartfelt desires to be closer to the Lord, our heartfelt desires to be closer to Jesus. And whatever you want to do, Lord, in my life, do it. it Lord, however you want to use me, Jesus, use me. I'm yours, God. Everything I am, I'm yours, God. And, and, and so the heartbeat of, of a believer, the heartbeat of a Hezekiah, if you would, is someone that says, I don't, want, I don't want to fit in the world that God brought me out of. I don't want to fit in this world that God brought me out of. The Bible, there's one example where the Lord gives. He says it would be like a dog that returned back to his vomit. That's kind of a gross thing to say, but really, really, that's, that's about where, where it sums up. Only sick dogs return back to that. And I think it's important to understand that when God brought us out, he meant for us to stay in the church. Hezekiah said, repair the doors. The great thing about the door is this. The people on the outside can see that the doors have been repaired. I always, I always think this. I, I, I'm, I'm thankful at our church we have someone that mows the grass and someone that takes care of the outside of, of the church. I'm a big believer. If, if, if the people driving down the road see that the church is a mess, then they can pretty much figure that the inside's probably a mess as well. But if they can look and they can see and they can, they can look at the outside of the church and the outside of the church looks like someone's cared about it. Someone picked up the trash. Someone mowed the lawn. You know, someone went, someone went around and, 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 and trimmed all, all the bushes and the trees and all that stuff. Then, then they, they look at that stuff. And they said, someone cared enough to take care of the property. Certainly, certainly someone cared enough to take care of the inside. And this is the importance of repairing doors is this. The people on the outside can see that the people on the inside care enough to make sure that the house is ready. If, if you knew that Jesus was coming by your house tonight, what would you do? What would you do in your home to prepare for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come? Would you vacuum the house? Would you make sure that, that, that the trash was picked up? And did you, would, you, would you do some mopping and some dusting and some washing of dishes? And would you, would you make sure that everything was clean and, and, and just spotless? Of, uh, of course you would. You've got, you've got the Lord coming to your house and you would prepare that. And, and, and yet in our world that we live in today, we have signs of his coming all around us. It's all around us. Everything is saying, you, everything is saying to us, the king is coming. The king is coming. And the only thing that we can do is prepare our house, prepare our hearts and our minds and, and get ready because Jesus is coming back. It's an exciting time. It just, you, you start thinking about the king is coming. Everything that we've been through is going to be worth it. Every hardship and every trial, it's going to be worth it. And, 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 and now's the time to start cleaning the house. And Hezekiah was preparing God's house so that the God of heaven and earth would come in there. And, 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 and when God comes into your house, he's cleaning it up and he's straightening some things up. And Hezekiah is preparing. He's preparing for a move of God. He's preparing for a move of God. Ahaz could have done what Hezekiah did. But the truth of the matter is, is this. He didn't really mind idol gods in the house of God. He, didn't, he, he really didn't mind sharing the temple of God, the house of God, because he kind of agreed with them being there. I think it's important. I think it's important to note that we've got to be very careful that we don't approve of stuff by our silence. I think it's important 
that we don't approve of things like this by our by our by our silence if you're a child of god speak up if you are um if you've been saved and sanctified filled with the holy ghost and trying to get closer to jesus and reading your bible and praying and there's something that's out there that you know it isn't right don't hold your peace on it speak up about it speak up about it let the lord use your voice ahaz said i'm not going to say a word but hezekiah hezekiah said i'm going to say something because something is not right and 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 the best way to do that is not to be mean or ugly spirited about anything that's not that's not what God has called us to be. But sometimes we need to go and have a good old fashioned Holy Ghost, a, a, a prayer shaken, holy old fashioned prayer meeting where we get serious with God and we ask God, God, what pleases you? And God, what doesn't please you? And and you get there and you and you say, Lord, I need for you to speak to me. And I promise you, He will speak to you. I don't want to tolerate. I don't want to tolerate what God calls evil. In fact, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us to eschew it. That really means is to hate it. That's a very strong word, but that's actually what that word means. It says hate evil. Don't, don't, but we live in a world today where they actually call good evil and evil good. But the Bible predicted that that would happen, prophesied that that would happen. But we as Christians, we're not to go with the trends of the world. We as Christians are to stand strong and we are to stand firm on the word of the Lord. Now, this is something that's very, very interesting. I love stuff just like this. The Bible says that Hezekiah, one of the first things that he did, so this is, this is really, really, really neat. The Bible says that Hezekiah got a hold of all the priests and the Levites. Now, these are, these are what we'd call the spiritual people. And, and he told them, he said, he said, sanctify yourselves. Sanctify. That word sanctify is literally, is, could be the same word as we, we refer to as holiness. Separate yourselves. In other words, is clean yourselves up. Separate yourselves away from people that you shouldn't be hanging out with. He says, because you're fixing to clean God's house up, you need to make sure that you yourself are sanctified. And that's an important principle because you'll never be able to work in God's house unless you are first willing to clean your own house first. I've uh, been pastoring long enough. I'm coming up on my 11th year this coming this coming month. And uh, there's always people that would say, I want to be used. I want to be used. And that's great. Uh, that that is great, but there is a level of responsibility on our part to clean our lives up so Jesus can use us. You don't have to be perfect to be used of God, certainly not, but you do have to strive for perfection. You do have to try and say, God, I want to be closer to you today than what I was even yesterday. You do got to have a prayer life, and you got you to gotta read God's Word, and you got to meditate on God, and you got to want to be closer to the Lord and 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 Hezekiah he looks at the priests and he looks at these levites and said look you guys need to sanctify yourself you need to set yourself apart you need to clean your life up because you're fixing to go inside the house of God and you are there um you are there to clean God's house sanctify yourselves and watch God work in your life now this is this is to me the crazy thing about this is this is that Hezekiah had to tell the prophets and the priests how to do their job. Think about that. Think about that for a little. Saul, remember, first king, Saul had Samuel. Samuel helped Saul hear from the word, hear from the word of God. Saul had Samuel and David. David had Nathan to help them in their their spiritual lives but hezekiah had to tell the ministry how to do their job because the ministry had forgotten the importance of sanctification they had forgotten the importance of living for god and being 
something different and being set apart and wanting to strive to be more like God. Someone, someone forgot to tell Ahaz, Ahaz, we shouldn't be doing this. This isn't right. And and and, and I, I think it's important for everyone to have someone in their life that has permission to speak to them clearly and to tell them, hey, you're going the wrong way. You're not doing the right things. The priest should have been pressing Hezekiah, but they forgot how to stand up for righteousness. They forgot how to stand up for holiness. They forgot how to stand up for, 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 for sanctification. And now God flips the whole thing apart and says, I'm going to use Hezekiah to tell the priest how to do their job. I think it's important to understand that we don't want to be the church that forgets how to stand up for righteousness. We don't want to be the generation that says it's not worth it. It ain't worth it. I, I, I don't want to live for God any longer. It's time, it's time we clean our, our lives up. It's time, Hezekiah says, it's time, it's time to clean God's house up. Hezekiah told the priest to get in the house of God, and he, he told him specifically, get all this filthiness out of this holy place. This stuff doesn't belong here. This stuff does not belong here. Now, I think it's important to have a, a, a it's going to sound old-fashioned, old but I just believe this way. I think it's important that we have a reverence for the house of God. I think it's important that we have a respect for the house of God. I, I guess I was raised old, old school. I would have never thought of... Uh, you know, eating a, a five-course meal in the house of God or anything like that. I just, I just believe God's house should be a place where it's a separation. It's, you know, God's house is not the dining room. It's, 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 it's the upper room. It's, it's, it's the power of God's presence. Uh, it's a place where, where lives are changed. The altar is not... It's not a place where, you know, you sit and watch movies. The altars, uh, altars are a place where people um, get forgiveness of their sins and God puts families back together again. And it's a powerful, very powerful experience. And uh, I, think, I, think, I think it's important that we get that respect back for the house of God. I certainly, certainly would never say anything to hurt anyone's feelings but i just i think it's so important to just have a reverence for the house of god this is the place where where our where where our children are going to grow up to be to be great uh, people in the lord this is the place where families can be put back together again this is the place where lives can be changed this is this is holy ground this is a place where 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 the addict can the addict can come off the street and come in the house of god and they can repent of their sins and be baptized in the name of jesus and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's, it's not just any place. It's not our living rooms. It's not, it's, it's not our kitchens. It's, it's the house of God. It's, it's, it's that place of reverence. And Hezekiah, he, he looks at this. He says, guys, we got we to gotta get the house of God functioning in a way where it, it must function. And I think it's important that we keep it a place where God can, God can dwell. Hezekiah, he's 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 trying his best to keep this place a holy place. He didn't he didn't need unholy examples to bring God's holiness into the house. He didn't need idols or or uh, or anything like that. God's house was filled with His presence, and 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 Hezekiah knew that. Uh, it's not the process of bringing in unholy things to bring in down a holy God. He. Uh, as long as we did it the way he wanted us to do it, he would come, and and that's beautiful for our lives as well. You don't have to um, you don't have to bring in other things if you're just being transparent before God and you do it the way God wants you to do it. Then God will bless you. I promise you, He'll bless you. There's a great scripture in the Bible that says, "I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread." In other words, this is this: if you seek God, if you seek God first, God will bless you. God will bless you. He'll keep you. He'll hold you. He will, he will bless you in ways that you never even dreamed was possible. Hezekiah told the priest to get in the house of God, get all, the, get all that junk out, get all the filthiness out. I got to get God's house back to the way that God needs, needs, it, needs for it to be. He needed people that were willing to take out stuff that was unholy 
so that he could show his holiness. God always needs people in every church that are willing to take out things that don't belong and to keep things that always belong. That's the important. That's the important of cleaning God's house. Hezekiah, he then talked to the priests about, about the unrighteousness of their fathers. He tells them that they've, they've turned their backs on God. I mean, he gets right where they're at and says, look, your fathers, the, the, the generation that was before you have turned their backs on God and you followed suit. So Hezekiah comes to the conclusion that Ahaz allowed some stuff in and therefore they've turned their backs on God and turned their back on the God of their salvation. And I think it's important that we take care of God's house, that spiritual house in our life. We have that value system. We look at it as Hezekiah looked at it and say, guess what? There's some things we there's some things that are worth fighting for. There's some things that are worth standing for. There's some things that are worth saying, God, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move on this. I'm going to I'm there's gonna, there's some things I'm not going to barter. My salvation, the house of God, the things of God, the people of God, and everything that God would have. I'm not going to let anything anything make me turn my back on my God. And so Hezekiah looked at them and said, he said, the lamps, the lamps haven't been burnt, which was the signification of God's word wasn't being read. He said the incense was being neglected, which was a sign that there was no praise and there was no singing, nothing to offer that sweet heavenly incense to God, where God looked down and said, I like what I'm seeing. Like, I like what I'm smelling from my people. Hezekiah knew by the temple, by the temple, that there needed to be a cleaning that God could bless them. Hezekiah knew by looking at the temple of God, the shape of the people of God. And that's important for us. That's important for us. That we understand that God is looking down at our temples. He's looking at our lives. And he's saying, guess what? There's some things that we need to clean up in our life. There's some things that, I, that we, we, need to, we, need to, we need to put on the altar. There's some things I need to pray about. There's some things that I don't have, I, I, that I don't have right, right, right. Now, but I got to get it right. And I got to get it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Tonight, if you're, if you're watching tonight, in closing tonight, I, I want to I encourage you tonight. If it's been a while since you prayed and sought God's face, I'm going to ask you tonight, just take a moment, have a moment with Jesus. You don't have to pray like me. God really just wants you to talk to him and ask God to forgive you. Ask God, just get real with God. Say, God, I got some things in my life I, I need some help with. If you're at a point in your life that you've got some things that you don't know what to do and how you're going to get out of this, perhaps you got yourself in a mess. I got good news for you tonight. Jesus is just a prayer away. Why don't you pray to him? I promise you he, he'll listen. I promise you he's got your answers. Be like a Hezekiah and just say, Lord, I, I, I need to clean some things up. I, I need to get some things right. So that, Lord, that you can bless me. You see, the farmer, un the farmer understands you've got to till up ground before you can plant the seeds. This is a principle that the Lord wants for our life. Repentance, and repentance is tilling up the ground of our hearts. It breaks us down. So God can put precious seeds of miracles and blessings into our life. It's a great, it's a great way that God has, has planted. It's a perfect way. Tonight, take the time, pray, do an inspection. If your value system has gone, gone the wrong way, I encourage you tonight to ask God to help you pick it back up again. Have them priorities right back in place. Cleaning your house will bless, will bless your life today. Today, I'm so glad that you've, that you've joined me today. I, I pray that I was able to say something that was a blessing 
and uh, something that was just able to to help you. Um, again, if you don't have a home church, please come and be my be my be my guest. Uh, our church is at 8991 Old State Route 36. We're in Bradford, Ohio, and I promise you, uh, church that's alive is worth the drive. This is Pastor Matthew O'Shell. I'm signing out. I love you guys. I pray you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me tonight. May the good Lord bless you.